I'm in agreement with Garfield. I hate Mondays. What is it about that day that seems to bring everybody down? It's as if the day casts a shadow over all of us, shifting the mood of the universe for a full 24 hours. I just don't like it. Now, with that in mind, one of the most talented yet volatile bands of the rock era created a song about Mondays that kind of unintentionally summed up their brief but brilliant run on accident. They gifted us with a breathtaking classic. Now, this song was written in like 20 minutes, and nobody in the band liked it. They thought it was boring. Some even hated it with a passion. So imagine their surprise when the song hit number one and became one of the biggest of the year. Everyone wanted to know then, what's this song about? Well, as it was, not even the writer had a freaking clue what it was about. He just wrote it. But decades later, it turns out the song was an eerie prediction for what would happen to the band next. A story about a song that's named after the day of the week I hate most. I couldn't even release it on a Monday. <laughs> it's coming up on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you hate Mondays like Garfield, you're going to dig this channel of deep musical nostalgia. Make sure to subscribe below, click the red button, and click the bell so you always know when our stuff coming out. Hey. Mondays, you know what? We all look forward to the weekends. We celebrate Friday, Saturday. But Mondays? Everyone hates Mondays, right? I mean, sure, the NFL brought us Monday Night Football. That helps a little bit. You know, and sometimes the Monday uh, movie of the week in the 80s, that maybe pepped it up a little bit. But I just, I never liked Mondays. Seems like I hate it even more as I grow older. I mean, let's be honest, it was added to give gamblers one last shot to recover from their weekend losses. Throughout the rock era, there have been many songs lamenting the oncoming of that dreadful day. I mean, there's Blue Monday by Fats Domino that came out in 1956. A lot of urban legends about that song. Let me know if you want to hear the stories of that. Blue Monday, how I hate Blue Monday. There's also New Order's Blue Monday. There's Prince's song Manic Monday. That was a number two hit for the Bengals in 86. It's just another manic Monday. Sir Bob Geldof and the Boomtown Rats created a song that took the drag of the day to deadly extremes called I Don't Like Mondays. A 16 year old high school student in Georgia went on a shooting spree firing at children who were playing in the schoolyard. The emotionally unhinged teenager had no remorse for what he did when they asked, you know, why she did it. She responded, I don't like Mondays. Paul Williams wrote about a double downer, a rainy day on a Monday in his song, Rainy Days and Mondays, that the Carpenters took to number two in 1971. Rainy days and Mondays always get me dry. Or so there was a band called Happy Mondays, which was either an oxymoron, deranged optimism, or both. He's got his on you. 2021 Imagine Dragons created a song simply called Monday. My kids told me about that one. I haven't heard that one. You are my Monday, you're the best day. But from a chart perspective, the only song about Monday to hit the coveted number one position on the Billboard Hot 100 was, of course, Monday, Monday by the Mamas and the Papas. Monday, Monday. John Phillips, the leader of the Mamas and the Papas, he wrote Monday, Monday in 1966. He said it only took him about 20 minutes to write it. It surprised him almost as much as it surprises us. How long does it take to write a number one song? Eh, about 20 minutes. How could you leave and not take me? So it all started actually on a Sunday when Mamas and the Papas bandmate uh, Danny Doherty was nudging John to come up with some new material for the group to record. Um, he's like, write a hit song, write something good. In a sarcastically cocky tone, John said he'd come back tomorrow morning with a song that had Universal Appeal, hit song. So John zeroed in on something that everyone in the universe could relate to. What I've been talking to, kind of beaten with a dead horse by this point, Mondays suck. <laughs> okay, so fast forward to the next day. John shows up the next morning. 
on Monday morning, of course, <laughs> uh, with this song that he promised to write. And Danny Doherty, he was not impressed. He thought Monday Monday was boring, boring. In an interview, Danny said that nothing stood out about Monday Monday when he heard it. Jim was just a dumb song about a day of the week. Monday, Monday. Now, on first listen, I get what Denny's saying, right? No real context. I mean, the lyrics were not exactly profound. If you think of them simply, Monday, Monday, can't trust that day. Monday, Monday, sometimes it just turns out that way. On Monday morning, you gave me no warning of what was to be. On Monday, Monday, how could you leave and not take me? Pretty simple. How could you leave and not take me? It might seem unassuming at first, but 58 years later, that verse has become a classic from the timeless hit by the Mamas and the Papas. When John Phillips wrote Monday, Monday, he probably didn't realize that he was capturing the universal feeling of Monday's unpredictability. It's really a mix of melancholy and resignation, all delivered through those spine-tingling, heavenly harmonies. Seriously, not many are on the level of the harmonies of the Mamas and the Papas. The ethereal harmonies, uh, they were the hallmark of this group. But even for those experts, Monday Monday proved difficult to perfect. I mean, the female part was especially challenging for Mama Cass as it was slightly too high for her low alto range. Now, because of this, when they performed Monday Monday Live, uh, the group would often have to play it in a lower key. <laughs> That's interesting. You have a hit song, and then when you tour it and take it out there, you got to play it in a lower key. It's just interesting. Ba -da, ba -da -da -da. As it was, uh, Danny Doherty wasn't the only one that didn't care for Monday Monday. The other two members of Mamas and the Papas, uh, Cass Elliott and Michelle Phillips, they also found the song to be pretty inconsequential. Uh, actually, in her autobiography, California Dream and the True Story of the Mamas and the Papas, Michelle Phillips recalled the song's early moments. She wrote, and I quote, John emerged from our friend's bathroom with his guitar, as usual, and he said, I want to write a song with universal appeal. We said, okay, good luck with that. I'm going to write a theme that everyone can relate to. And then he sang the opening line, Monday, Monday, can't trust that day. Scratching their heads, Danny Cass and Michelle all quizzed John about the meaning of the song. And, you know, his answer didn't put their minds at ease. I don't know what the hell the song's about. That's how John responded. Ba -da, ba -da -da -da. Back in the 60s, there was one sure way to turn a lyric sheet into a pop smash, though. When in doubt, hire the wrecking crew. <laughs> LA's assembly of the best studio musicians on the planet. Now, on the recording of Monday, Monday, there was Larry Nectel on keyboards. There was Joe Osborne playing bass. Hal Blaine was on drums. The great P.F. Sloan played guitar. Now, at just 20 years of age, P.F. Sloan was the youngest of the renowned Wrecking Crew. He recalled the session as magical and even takes credit for suggesting the drum riff to Hal Blaine. Uh, inspired by a song he had worked on during his time with the Grassroots. Sloan later added a tremolo effect to his guitar part, which he overdubbed. Following up the grand top five success of his performance on California Dreamin', Denny Doherty delivered the lead vocal for Monday Monday. And man, Denny Doherty, very, very underrated as a vocalist, uh, or underappreciated, however you want to say it. I think it was certainly one of his finest moments, if not the apex of his career. Michelle Phillips, the last surviving member of the Mamas and the Papas, once described Denny's voice as that of a psychedelic Frank Sinatra. I've always thought that was the coolest compliment, and it describes it perfectly. Now, Danny Doherty was born in Halifax, Nova Scotia, to an iron worker father and a mother he affectionately called a housewife and mystic. His first taste of performing... That came at age 15 when he sang Pat Boone's hit Love Letters in the Sand during an amateur night at the local skating rink. Pretty cool first gig. By the late 50s, he had embraced the emerging folk music scene and he secured a recording contract with Columbia in New York along with his group, the Halifax Three. Now, when he teamed up with John Phillips to form the Mamas and the Papas in 1965, 
it would really become a partnership that was both a blessing and a curse. Let me explain. Monday Monday was the third single released by the Mamas and the Papas, and it was the final track to be released from their debut record, If You Can Believe Your Eyes and Ears, conducted by the highly respected record and film producer Lou Adler. Now, John Phillips showed up one day at Lou Adler's office to discuss a potential record deal. Lou casually mentioned that John probably needed a bath. He was a hippie, and he kind of stunk. But he went ahead and set up an audition for that following Sunday. Now, on the day of the audition, Lou was actually tempted to cancel it because it was a beautiful Sunday, and he wasn't convinced that John had much talent. But having been in a dry spell lately, he decided to go through with this meeting, pulling the motto that you never know when the next big act is going to come along. You know, it could be right under your nose. See, even though he thought it was a 50-50 prospect, Lou kept the appointment with John, and as soon as the first song began, as he played it, Lou lit up. He was positive it was a hit. Now, he tried to keep a poker face, you know, not wanting to show how excited he was about what he had just heard. Second song he played, and in his mind, this sounded like another hit. The same thing was what he felt for the third one. At this point, he told John, Cass, Denny, and Michelle that he'd offer them a $100,000 signing bonus. He figured that he could mortgage his house to get the money if he needed to. That's how much he believed in these guys. Now, when it came time to talk business, he asked what they were looking for exactly. John responded that they needed a three-bedroom apartment, a used VW Bug to tool around, and about $1,200 to $1,500 in spending money. Lickety split, Lou got everything lined up, including the artist contracts and the mamas and the papas were all set to make their first record. Lou Adler, he second-guessed himself a little bit when the group's first single, Go Where You Wanna Go, didn't make much of an impact. But you know what? His faith was restored by the follow-up, The Great California Dreamin', which, of course, was a massive hit, one of the biggest hits of that year. California Dream and climbed the charts. AM Top 40 stations started to play Monday Monday off the album. Uh, this was before it was an actual single for radio. They were kind of beating the, uh, beating everybody to the punch since California Dream was doing so well. By the time it was officially released as a single, anticipation was very, very hot. And it quickly shot to number one. All four members of the group were shocked at the level of success achieved by Monday Monday. In addition to grabbing the top spot on the singles chart, Monday Monday won the Grammy Award for Best Contemporary Group Performance in 1966. Again, the group was shocked. They were shocked that this 20-minute song, took 20 minutes to write, that they thought was boring was a hit. Now here's an interesting fact that you won't find really anywhere else. Monday Monday features a dramatic pause right before the coda, which then shifts up a semitone. Now, interestingly, when it took over the number one spot from Good Lovin' by the Young Rascals, it was the first time in Billboard Hot 100 history that two consecutive chart toppers included these dramatic pauses. Monday, Monday. So the Mamas and the Papas made their way to California, and after signing their deal with Lou Adler and Dunhill Records and a couple of big hit singles under their belts, you know, life seemed to be perfect. But there was trouble brewing beneath the surface. That's always how it goes, right? A long-standing flirtation between Danny Doherty and Michelle Phillips, it turned into a full-blown affair. In the free spirit of vibe at the time, John, Michelle, and Denny tried to navigate the love triangle in their own way. Papa John and uh, Doherty, they moved into a house together in the Hollywood Hills, promising not to see Michelle. But of course, secretly, they both broke that vow. Out of this complicated situation came one of the band's most popular songs, I Saw Her Again. It had lyrics like, every time I see that girl, you know I want to lay down and die, but I really need that girl. I'm living a lie. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Despite their enormous talent as a dynamite quartet, the combination of affairs, torrid affairs, 
drugs and really jealousy would prove too lethal for the group to endure. This led to their short three-year run of prosperity before the inevitable breakup of the Mamas and the Papas. The Mamas and the Papas, they broke up in 1968 after John and Michelle Phillips divorced, though they did briefly reunite in 1971. Now, Danny released a solo album in 1974 and later gained prominence in the 90s as the voice behind all the characters in the children's TV series Theodore Tugboat. Where he also played the harbor master. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore, now, Monday Monday was a brilliant arrangement with a captivating melody, but a big part of the appeal of the track is its purveying gloominess, really. I mean, it evokes a bluesy feeling of uncertainty with gripping emotional depth. That's what I love about this song. Now, it's been placed in a variety of TV shows The Vampire Diaries, Queen of the Universe, and Schitt's Creek and in films like Repo Man and Leap Year in 2010, and then leave it to Will Ferrell to put a funny spin on a sad song like the way Monday Monday was used in the 2010 movie The Other Guys. Of course, co-starring Mark Wahlberg. I love how they use it there. Someone's been playing Grand Theft Auto. Oh, I did that! As mentioned, Michelle Phillips is the last surviving member of the Mamas and the Papas. Mama Cass, Mama Cass Elliot, she was the first to go. Um, she died of a heart attack in 1974. And John Phillips was in 2001, and Denny Doherty passed in 2007. Now, less than a year after Denny's death, Monday Monday was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. Monday, Monday. It's really fascinating to consider the dynamics within the Mamas and the Papas. The love triangle between John, Michelle, and Denny, that certainly added a layer of complexity that might have been impossible to sustain. I have thought a lot about whether the band could have survived longer if you know, John and Michelle's marriage, for example, might have been more stable or they hadn't got together in the first place. But then again, Mama Cass's unrequited feelings for Denny likely would have introduced another set of problems. Um, the personal drama within the group it was almost as dramatic as their music. They were definitely a precursor to the drama in Fleetwood Mac. And uh, we hear a lot about Fleetwood Mac, not so much here. I've also given a lot of thought to John Phillips' comment that he didn't really know what Monday Monday was about after he wrote the song. A hit song doesn't have to have some you know, deep philosophical significance. A song can still get into the head and the heart because it's simply, eloquently expressive of everyday life. There's at least one day of the week that seems to control us physically and emotionally, and that is the dreaded Monday, as I've said. The day that sets the tone for the entire week, unfortunately. Oh, Monday, Monday, can't trust that day. Can't trust that day. When we get out of it, it becomes Tuesday. And then there's you know, a little bit of a sense of relief because we survived the onslaught of chaos and the unpredictability that it brings. And Tuesday just means that we're that much closer to the weekend. And uh, you know, the weekend is a couple of sweet days where you can get a little break from the madness for the most part. But maybe in order to deal with that horrible rotten day, we had to flip the script a bit and tap into the positive psyche of the late great Jimmy Buffett, who optimistically looked forward to the first day of the week when he said, Come Monday, it'll be all right. <laughs> Come Monday, it'll be all right. Come but you know, in the end, Monday Monday has an even more poignant meaning with the hindsight of the career of the Mamas and the Papas. Especially when you think about John's lyrics when he wrote, Monday Monday, so good to me. Monday morning, it was all I hoped it would be. But Monday morning, Monday morning, I couldn't guarantee that Monday evening, you would still be here with me. You would still be here with me. Every other day of the week is fine, but whenever Monday comes, you can find me crying all the time. You can find me crying all of the time. You think about it, in those lyrics, it really sadly sums up the career of the Mamas and the Papas. You know, with Monday representing the famed group. Optimistic, about their prospects and music. I mean, they had 10 big hits in about three and a half years, including six that went to the top five. 
It was everything they hoped it would be, the success. But then the discord that rose within the band proved that there are no guarantees in music, in rock and roll, in that business. And the hits and the praise from the critics and fans, it couldn't stop the group from imploding. Seriously, if they could have made music together for another five or 10 years, they could have been one of the greatest groups ever. The talent was there. But in the end, as the song so sadly conveys, whenever Monday comes, you can find me crying all the time. All we have is what might have been. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to leave us a comment about Monday, Monday. I really do feel like the Lamas and the Papas are one of the, the most underappreciated groups ever. I mean, they had such a great run right there. And if they would have stayed together, anything was possible. Let's have a great discussion below. What do you think are some of their best songs? What do you think about the harmonies? Truly one of the saddest stories in rock history, in my opinion. It's a band that they could have been in the same breath as Fleetwood Mac. Um, anyway, let's have a great discussion. If you like our content, we do invite you to subscribe. We'd love to have you as part of our, part of our community. Till next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.